Hi, this is Angela Ellery at Double Exposure, president of Double Exposure Media. I just learned about this fantastic outlet. It's called Soul Booking Cool. Check it out. Welcome to Soul Booking Cool. I'm Jewel B. Today we are joined by special guest, public relations guru of nearly 50 years, who is also the founder, CEO, and president of Double Exposure Media Relations. He has represented clients such as Michael Jackson, James M. Toomey, in which he also served as the head of M. Toomey's entertainment company, DMX, Dion Warwick, Lionel Richie, Shabba Ranks, Gang Stars, just to name a few. He is also the author of the book, the new book, The Sense of Success. He is Mr. Angelo Ellerby, everyone. Wow, what, a, what an incredible introduction. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for being here. So happy to have you on So Booking Cool. I'm happy to be a part of a theme, a theme, So Booking Cool. What an <laughs> extraordinary theme. I love it. Thank you so much. And what is the secret to success? What is the secret to longevity? Mr. Ellerby. I think it's when you have a passion, because I don't look at what I do as work. It's a passion. I aid, I assist, I oversee, supervise, and manage lives, uh, not just in a publicity light, but in all light as it, re as it relates to just human existence. Mm -hmm. I'm a motivator of energy. I'm an exciter to people who have not been excited. I give out what's given to me which is a great deal of energy, insightfulness, and love. I think it all is coupled and gathered together, and it's what I've enjoyed doing for all of these years. And I tell people every single day, it's what you put in is what you get out. It's what you can get back if you put nothing in. And the same energy that it takes for you to be positive as the same energy it takes for you to be negative, why not be positive? It's called good life. So is that where you got the inspiration for the sense of success? Like, tell us about that and why the book is important to you. Well, the book is important to me because I see so many young people today being at a disadvantage, particularly those young brothers and sisters who are being incarcerated. Those sisters that are single parenting and raising their children, those women that are being battered, those who have not had complete educations. I believe that we all have an innate success built up in our souls. Sometimes some of us grab onto it a little bit faster. Some of us have to dig deep down inside to find it, but it's there. And so I thought that if I brought and created a book of awareness, that they can find where their inner success was. If I can shine a light, a spotlight on where success is in their soul, they can go and they can go and further develop and further create the energy and the insightfulness of success in their souls. I think that there's a void of love. I, I tell people daily that I'm romantically in love with Angelo Ellerby. I love me some me. And I fuel myself with that every day because I have to fuel so many other people with love. If I can love me, then I can, I can love other people. And I can tell them how they should love themselves and how they should want themselves and how they should inspire themselves and how they should uplift themselves and how they should just be themselves no matter what. The acceptance of you is success. The movement of you is success. You have to find it in yourself. And sometimes you need to be instructed about how to find the scent of success that lingers within your soul, that lingers within your brain, that you've been blocking because of the demons and the bad airs and the bad energies that you put yourself in. I tell people in my book, be aware of demons because they come in disguises. They come in as brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers and aunts and uncles and boyfriends and husbands and sometimes children. So everyone has a place. And I believe that everyone should earn their place within your heart and within your environment. So the book was written just as it's just a smelling salts, if you will, of awakening. Wow, that's powerful. You also have a line of scented candles, and where did that inspiration come from? 
The inspiration is I've been living and loving candles all of my adult life. I I really do believe and have a spiritual belief in the man above. And I live right by the Hudson River, so I live by water, and I live by serenity. And I light candles throughout my condo each and every single day, particularly in the morning. Before I go to do anything, I light candles throughout throughout the apartment, up and downstairs. It's just important for me to remove whatever those demons is or whatever was in there, and I, I like the scent. And then, I'm, and then I pray by the candles. So I do 45 minutes of the present of, of just praying each morning. And so when someone came to my house and they said, oh, your house smells so good, and I said, oh, it's just like scents and stuff that I've developed in the whole other bit. And he just said, why don't you do a candle line? I said, a candle line? I'm not doing it. No, I, I couldn't even entertain, but my hands on another project. And then I thought about it, and I, I was introduced to a wonderful chemist, uh, and then a, a great creator of the candles and said, okay, let's do it. Let's try it. And so here we are, L.A.B. Elegance. Uh, it's my candle line and that I'm very, very, very proud of. I've worked very hard on it. My team has worked very hard on it, and we have put it out there. It's going to be a series of candles. The mm. candle that we have out now is just a flavor and scent of grapefruit and cinnamon and peppermint. But uh, I think it is in October is when we put out the straight four dimensional candles, which is going to be called Faith, Confidence, Belief, and Passage. Mm, that is wonderful. And, yeah, and then you can just take your, the way I do, I take my candles. You can take faith and you can pray by faith. You can take any one of the candles and however you deem yourself to be for that day, light it up and, and walk with it and be with it. Is it also possible to meditate with the candles? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. It's, I find, I find it just so relaxing to just take those moments with those candles and just meditate by the candles. Absolutely. So, Mr. Ellerby, what has been the response to the sense of success thus far? It has been an overwhelming response. When I go, well, the book is published, well, it's a self-published book, but it's on Amazon. But when I go and read the reviews, um, I'm blown away. Um and I'm really blown away and most appreciative of people just picking up or purchasing the book and actually reading the book to get an understanding of where I'm coming. I'm blown away when people, when I go to do book signings or I go to the lecture, and people really read these, is really reading this book, and you may say, what are you talking about? That's what they purchased it for. But as the author of the book, I can only appreciate that someone, one, purchased it, and then two, read it, and are able to tell me about it. That's a phenomenal feeling for your writing and your time that you spend creating something that someone is purchasing and buying, and it's being helpful to them. And so I'm, I'm very fulfilled with what has taken place with the book uh, to date. I'm very, very happy with it. Um, I'm starting a tour, college tour. Um, we're going, I think I go to North Carolina starting in September. And then I do North Carolina, South Carolina, and I know they're developing other territories at this point. But, yeah, it's I, I just believe that my people, people who look like me, um, deserve to have the rights to understand that they're successful. They are successful. I just need for them to open their eyes and dig deep down inside and find out where their success is. And if I have to be that person that shines that candle so they can see and feel and understand where the sense of the fragrance of success is coming from internally inside of them, let it be. And how does the sense of success differ from Ask Angelo, an inside look at the entertainment industry from a PR guru? I think that they're both were self-help books. I don't know if they differ so much. This one, uh, this book here, The Sense of Success for me, was really about a number of things. I was thinking more about the layperson uh, versus the entertainment industry. I really wanted people who are out here trying to knock down their barriers, people who have given up on themselves, people who who don't feel that they need to challenge themselves, people who are 55 years old and believe that their life is over and
and they at one time was this great success and then they lost it all. I just wanted a book of encouragement. So the difference in this book is this book is written for everyone. The initial book was more of a self-help book for those people who wanted to enter into the performing arts, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm really about that layperson. And I'm really about that Latino, that African American, that Asian person who is out here finding it rough and difficult in finding their way and finding their avenue. I, I, I'm trying to convey over to them that it's not important about being popular. It's not important about, it's important about you being popular with you. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not about being bullied. It's not about any of those barriers. You have to learn to break down the barriers. You have to learn to stay focused. You have to love yourself. You have to be with you. You got to cuddle you. You got to love you. You got to know that there's trials and tribulations. You got to put on your boxing gloves and you got to become Muhammad Ali and you've got to knock them out each go. And sometimes in all of what you go through, it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't seem like you are getting through, but you are getting through. And it's just, the book is really about just taking self-preservation and, and learning from right. it. And I know you mentioned earlier that right now you feel there is a void of love right now. And do you ever think at all that social media, like, is a part of that? Like, you know, some of the negativity and why some people are down on themselves? Well, I think it begins with the, the with uh, with our, our our president of the United States of America, where he can speak so freely and so negatively, where he can take children from their mothers and fathers, where he can separate them and put them in cages. That's scary as all hell. To think that you're a leader of the country in which you live would would separate mm -hmm. and tear. It their children, separating them from their mothers and their father. Now, if that don't take you on a will to want to just do God, godly work, to bring a, a, an understanding of what is really going on in this, these are sensitive times. And then you're talking about the depression. And then you're talking about people not being, really not being opened up to dealing with their depression, their mental sickness, mental sickness is impairing our country, is doing a number to our country, and no one wants to do anything about it. And people are shutting themselves down because they're, they're, let's just say they're doing drugs, let's just say that they have a mental problem, let's just say that all, these are things that, sh that shut down our young people. And then it has to, has to be an open door of acceptance. But that, let's not worry about the, the public accepting. Let's worry about us accepting each other for who we are. And then, I think when you get comfortable in your own skin of acceptance and loving yourself, I think people follow pursuit. But when you're beat up with all the negatives about the acceptance of who you are, the color, the marriage, whatever the, whatever the situation is, you get confused and then it gets into a problem. It's, we, we can go on and on and on about this. I just think that it's a part of my daily duty to tell people that you have a gift, and it's called the gift of life. And here's the things that come with the gift, and here are the things that come with life. Now, do you want to be happy in life? Do you want to be committed in life? Here is how we have to go about getting there. And so it becomes important to me to do my part as a contributor to society and particularly to people who look like me. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> you're speaking so much truth and <laughs> dropping a lot of gems here. Um, Thank you. Is it true that there is a publishing bid for your life story? Yes, it's very true. Mm -hmm. um, it's very, very true, and it has been for some time. I, uh, the New York Times did a piece on me about, my God, six or seven years ago, maybe even, even longer, uh, where they talked about I was the Henry Higgins of modern day times. And it's nothing different from what I still do to this day is teaching and educating and motivating people 
and um, creating a 24-week artist development program that did all those things. Um, I think that one of the most popular clients that I had in that time frame would have been Mary J. Blige. And that's when the New York Times had picked up on it and 20th Century Fox uh, brought the rights to my life. Uh, they had it a little backwards uh, after reading over the script, after they came out and they interviewed me and talked to me and did all of what they did. They had a, <laughs> I have to laugh at it, uh, and it's still in rewrites. Uh, they had me in love with Mary J. Blige, and that was just really funny. And I think the world would have thought it would have been really funny if that would have ever came out. So it's in rewrites. But yes, to answer your question, my, my life story has been purchased. And it's where, where it's at now in terms of production. I really couldn't tell you, but I know that, uh, I know that they're in rewrites. And have been in rewrites for years, but I constantly get that, still get that check. And that's what counts too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Obviously, you've had an amazing, like, incredible career. I mean, didn't you start out in fashion? Before I started out, my degree is in fashion design. I went to the Fashion Institute of Technology. Um, but before that, I was designing clothes at 14 and 15 years old. We sold in some major department stores, uh, like one of the kind of evening pieces. Uh, I did fashion shows in, in, in the city in which I grew up, in which it was Newark. I sat on the board of directors for many of the social organizations within uh, that urban city of Newark. Uh, I fought for the rights of HIV vegan AIDS and the freedom of young gay people. I did fashion shows to raise awareness and consciousness to my community that I thought was plagued with stupidity with me when it came down to HIV and AIDS. And so I did series of fashion shows, bringing over like Alvin Ailey Dancers and Carmen DeLavillon and Jeffrey Holder and Susan Taylor. Uh, these were things that I did when I was... Oh, God, 18, 19 years old. Uh, we would pack auditoriums each and every single year of 2,000, 3,000 folks, like at the Symphony Hall in, in Newark, and then I did the Robert Tree Hoods. My life, I have been so blessed to know what I wanted at maybe 13, 14 years old. And I think it all comes from how we go to raise our children. And I think that for me, I, I was raised by a single parent, my mom. And my mom had like what was maybe an eighth grade education, but I think she was a graduate of just life's university. And I thought she was the most brilliant woman on the face of this earth because she always told me that I was great because I was her child, but she wanted me to grow to be greater. And she said at the end, I want you to be the greatest at what you go to do. And she gave me what was motivation. And she was a very hard and a very firm woman. She took no nonsense. She made me, which I didn't understand when I was 15 and 16 years old, pay rent of like $600. And in paying this rent, I said, well, why? How am I going to get this? She says, you'll get it. And now, as I sit back, I, un I am now understanding what she was giving to me was survival skills. She gave me survival skills. She motivated me to say, if I'm not here today, we'll how are you going to survive? And so she made me an independent individual to go out and to raise myself with how I needed to treat myself. My mom was a phenomenal woman to a point that every my money is made off of my mother's teachings, uh, off of her encouragement and off of her will that she provided for me. She, I don't know if she even knew what she was doing when she was doing it, but she gave me, you know, she dressed me in suits and ties from from age five until maybe this, maybe age twelve. Haircuts every week. These are the things that were important to her, which became very important to me in terms of image and the stylization. Mm -hmm. um, she made me aware of how I was to speak to adults, how I was to acknowledge a woman coming in a room and if, I, if a young lady came in the room and I was sitting down that I needed to get up and I needed to pull the chair and I needed to know. she taught me what the forks to the right to the left the glasses all these things that I incorporated in my 24 week artist development program so you know I think when you're gonna when you take on the responsibility of being or yeah being a parent you take on a it's a huge responsibility 
and it's one that you have to monitor 365 days plus leap day on your child. And that's where my energy, my in- insightfulness, my knowledge of all these things came from my mother from Lombard, North Carolina to Newark, New Jersey to six children single-handedly. And that's why nothing can ever stand in my way or stop me because I was raised. I didn't just exist. I was raised and reared and educated and taught and loved. Do you think the the tools that parents you know, should be putting into their children like your your mother did with you, those wonderful tools. Do you think it is only essential when the child is like in their youth? I think it's from infancy is when you start to teach and love. That's when you start to love even the hand on the stomach, even at birth, you start to teach. You start to teach and love and you teach them the academics of life. You teach them just the real things of life. It's all at the beginning. At 10 years old, ain't no more teaching. They're molded. So you have to really spend time. I really appreciate a mom that has the affordability to stay at home and really raise their child. Or, or if they have to work, still give them the kind of undivided attention, loving guidance, or as much as they possibly can, to show them the difference in right and wrong, to tell them that, that you don't have to worry about being accepted. I accept you. And particularly if their child is born and despaired and have, that, that's where, that's where the more of that love comes in at. Parents have a, a awesome job. They have awesome responsibilities. If you're really going to be the parent or, an, or you can just make babies mm. and let them raise themselves. What is your advice for anyone who does want to get involved, like with helping other people and giving back, as well as those who want to work in artist development and public relations? My advice is to do it. It's just to do it, to get involved. Find someone that you can mentor. Or find someone that you choose, that, that, that you either want to follow, that you want to learn by, and connect and reach out. In this day and time, there is no reason that you can ever tell me that you can't get in touch with nobody. Because everybody's drawn to what? Social media. Somebody knows somebody that knows somebody. And you need to take the time to understand the givings or the worth of the person that you're trying to engage with. Do your homework. This is what you really want to do. do if, if you want to come in to do this as a part-time job, stay out of it. Go and find something else to do. Because that's what I tell people every single day. I take what I do very seriously. If you're coming up here to play games, I don't play. And I don't understand games. I I've had more employees than the Empire State Building has had steps. I'm about the business, and I'm in a servicing business. And because I'm in a servicing business, I must service each client with a mannerism of respect and diligence and follow-through and research their efforts. That's what keeps it consistent. I've never in 47 years ever had to advertise for a client. A lot of what I do is a repeat cycle of clients coming back over the years, over the years, over the years, over the years. If this is what you want to do, let it be a passion. And if this is what you want to do, connect with someone. And then you have to also be willing to learn the old way and the new way. Diversify. Incorporate. Because that's what I've done. I've taken what I know to what social media knows, to what the marketing tables are saying, with this, that, and it, it makes you complete. Can you tell us about your 24, is it 24 week development program? Sure, it's, it, my um, artist development program was one adapted by Kaplan University back in the early 2000s. And what it is, is a 24 week artist development program. Um, it's like going to college. It's like electives. Mm. You can elect to take the courses in which you want to take. So I do a, I do a focus in on artist development one, which is we go to one being travel. A lot of times young people believe that when they're in the entertainment industry that they can just bring 900 people along with them, not understanding that they're paying for it. 
not understanding that everything that they go to do from a record label's point of view is recoup, recoupment. So we teach them travel, how to deal with the important things in terms of the things that you must pack and travel. Uh, we, we also tell them how important it is about luggage, the presentation of the luggage, what goes into the whole, what goes into, what goes into your whole travel, not taking four and five people, learning the job and the task of all the things that you have to know and being a performer. So if it's hair and makeup, learn it versus taking another person with you because that's a structure fee that you have to pay. You have to pay them for the travel time. You have to pay them for the performance time of doing your makeup and your All that stuff adds up. And, and, and people are totally unaware of that. So when the time comes, if they sold a million records, they think they have made all this money. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, it's called recoupables. The record company gets back their money before you get your money. Then we go into interview techniques, mannerisms, uh, etiquette, table manners. It goes on down the list. Wow. And then I don't do it all. I have instructors that are experts in doing what they do. Yeah, so it's, um, it's a very interesting passion for me. And it's still a passion. Yeah, what about it fulfills a passion within you? The people who come my way learn. And they go on and they become great and they become greater and then they get to be the greatest of what they go to do is that what I put out, somebody wants to immunate. What I've done, somebody wants to copy. I applaud them. Not jealous. I applaud them because I, you have to understand coming from a single parent home, growing up in the city of Newark, having three addicted sisters. I fought my fight, and I continue to fight my fight. And so for for people to come in my life with that energy of acceptance and a willingness to want to learn from me, and they have they've learned from me, and they've grown from me, and they and now they're just they're there. It's it's rewarding to me when people tell me they've read my books and they tell me that I've experienced that. I don't give out solutions. It's it, it, it's, it's it's an incredible passion for me. And what is your advice for anyone who wants to write their book? Write it. Stop thinking about it and stop talking about it. Stop saying this is what you're going to do. Do it. Do it. Don't make any excuses. Oh, I don't know how to spell. Oh, I don't know how to do this. You know what? Sit at that computer and pick it out word for word. Get your feelings and your emotions out. Once you begin, you can never stop until it's done. I have, you know what, I'm just telling you that it is extraordinary for how God has blessed me. And I just want everyone to feel what a blessing is. And to feel what a blessing is, that means you have to work towards that blessing. It's like one step at a time. One step at a time in the growth, the development. It's an amazing feeling. You know, it's just like, claim it. Claim it. It's yours. Claim it and go after it. Stay focused. And if people don't like you, that's okay. If people think you're weird, that's okay. If people think you're this, that's okay. Stay focused. Because at the end of that rainbow, there's a pot of gold that's meant just for you. And you can go inside of it and you can spend from it for the rest of your life. Stay focused. Do you think there's ever a point of someone they keep going after something but for some reason they do keep on getting rejected do you think it's worth it to maybe say maybe i should try something else or try something different especially if you do have other interests i love trying something different and something else but i also keep my eyes on the prize of what i really wanted to i had i mean i had to eat to live as i was growing up i didn't do all the things that i wanted to do and when people would say to me what is it that you do or I don't like this, or I didn't like that what you did. And that, no, everybody has an opinion. But the most important opinion is your opinion. And so you have to learn the importance of how you have to support yourself in the survival of it all and your movement. Um, but you always keep your eyes on your prize. And no one can, I can't tell nobody. When people send me music every single day and was like, what do you think about this? It's not my, it's not my position to tell, tell you if you're talented or not. That's on you. I can tell you now, I think you need to go to voice lessons. 
You need to have some voice lessons. I think you need to have some posture. I think you need to do all these things which is going to well-round you, make you a well-rounded person. Yeah. Those are the things that I find to be important. I'm never going to shut somebody down from their dream. I'm because I, I wouldn't want nobody to shut me down from mine. You know, you know, you you know what you can endure, and you know how you can manifest what it is that you want to manifest. You know it. Nobody else knows it. You know it. And I I have always loved to prove people wrong. People say to me, you still in the same game? You, yeah, yeah, the same game is still paying my bills. Yes, I'm yeah. still in that game. Yeah, I mean, that, I'm still in the same game. That's right. But, I mean, it is what it is. And there's some people, are you really still doing Yes, I am. I, I totally am. And I, and I smile at them. Are there any books that have, like, helped you out? Sure, the Bible. Do you read it often, or how often do you read it? I used to read it often. Mm-hmm. I don't read it much today. I live by it from reading it often. Yeah. It's a message in my heart, and it's like the Bible was placed there. I learned the difference in treating people right and treating people wrong. Why do I want to treat somebody wrong? I want to treat them right. I want to do unto someone as they, I would want them to do unto me. I want to live as righteously as I possibly can. I walk three miles a day. And I put on my music and I walk and I am so thankful for just having what I have and living what I live. And I try to live the truth. And I tell people that the truth is not always on strike. I try to set it free. I just try to live as righteously as I possibly can. And I'm nobody's perfect person. I'm no religious hound. I'm just trying to live right, and I'm trying to educate people to live in right. Yeah, I can, I can definitely sense that from you. I, I want to squeeze in another question. Sure. What are your thoughts on publicity when it comes to, like, I want to use when an artist is having some really terrible things happen and it's playing out in the media at that point, what is more important? Is it, is it the demons that the artist is fighting or is it to clean up the image of that artist? Well, I think it's two, it's two into one. I mean, I dealt with so many trauma victims in the, in the music industry, um, demons that they have lived with for the majority of their life, but kept it a secret for, uh, where they became, position themselves as celebrities. Uh, I, I managed DMX for five years, and that was, um, well, I managed him for two and a half years, and I did publicity for him for two and a half years, which made that five years. Mm-hmm. And the only way that I was able to, what I felt, the only way that I was able to deal with him on any level was through prayer. And we would always pray together because he was very, very, uh, and to understanding and have an appreciation to his spiritual being. And I would talk to him about what was going on in his life from age 14. People people are not bad people because they want to be bad people. There are experiences that they had to endure that makes them difficult and go through what they had to go through. And it has always been my job, or I always wanted to make it my job, to find out reasoning of why somebody is like they are. And so that means that I have to take time to understand his mother, his raising, his rearing. I wanted to talk to his mother, his grandmother. I wanted to talk to all the all the people who was a part of his young life to understand where he's at and have an appreciation to where he was at in the current state and time, um, which made me have a better relationship of knowing how to position him. Um, that does not that does not deem that um, or gave me enough of knowledge to correct what had already taken place. This was an addiction that was not going to be erased, but it could be treated if given the kind of time and energy and the pursuit to try to find happiness and completeness for him. So to in answer of your question, clearly for me what it does I don't know. I think it's really important when you want to say that you want to involve yourself and be into PR 
it's not taking somebody to a party, and it's not getting them up on their social media, but it's about taking time to understand what it is that you're selling. I don't read bios and I don't listen to music. I have conversations, and I want to meet all of the various entities in your life that makes me be complete to know that I can sell you without reading your bio. I want to know you, and that's why you keep your clients to a limit, and you don't want to take for the you don't want to take fourteen or fifteen or sixteen of them because you know the kind of time that you have to commit for it. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah. Honey. It's really important that you know it's just like the overpopulation of public schools when they try to put forty kids in one class, mm -hmm. somebody's going to lose out. Like maybe twenty, maybe maybe like twenty five, thirty kids are gonna lose out because no one can give the time, or the energy, or the insightfulness to work with forty kids at one time. Somebody's losing out, and I think that 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 happens within our own communities. It happens within our families. Mm -hmm. You have to really, and that's why I say parenthood is really important, and teachers are important, and counselors are important, and all these people are important in the lives of our children. If, they, if they're really doing their job. What does it take for you to be interested in representing someone for double exposure media relations? It takes good conversation. And it, it, people always submit the music to me in the whole other bit. I'm like, let's get with the artist. Where's the artist? Let's talk to the artist. Let me talk. And then they always, you know, you bring the manager and you bring the mama and you bring the papa. And you, I, I don't want to talk to y'all until... It's time for me to talk to y'all. Let me start at the beginning, and that's with the artist, and understanding where his or her goals. Uh, and it's really important for me, their dedication. Because if, if their artist is not dedicated, then why the hell should I be dedicated? If they're not committed, if they don't understand that this is a full-time job and not a part-time job, uh, what, what are we doing? So I've become selective about who I go to work with based on their commitment to themselves and what, it, what it's going to take for them to win. And, that, you know, then when you get involved in it, you know, I, it's your PR stuff, it's your marketing stuff, you have to promote your records, you got to go to radios. All of that stuff is surface stuff. And then it's like, I want them to know the business of music. And these young people today don't really want to get into the business of music. They just want to do the music and perform. I want you to understand why you're performing and what you're getting from performance. So I want to take out the time to teach you and educate you about how you must cover yourself in white America. And I want to teach you the importance of doing white people business not just the business of music. How is it that they survive it in every form and fashion, and you're the producer and the quality controller of it, and you go out the window with nothing, and they have everything. I want you to understand the who, the what, the whens, the wheres, the whys of what is the music industry, what is the business. Business is important. Could you ever see yourself being involved in your same industry like of public relations but for because i know it's so vast like publicity could you ever see yourself being interested in publicity for other types of industries oh absolutely absolutely um it was strangely strangely enough i'm smiling at this i uh went to a repass on saturday in newark and um it was at a uh a funeral parlor that some people that I knew. And so, of course, when I came in, I greeted them and had a brief conversation with them. And then she texted me uh, and she was telling me about this new facility that she had opened. And yesterday she sent a car for me to come and see the facility. And she asked me if I would think about handling her business, her PR for her funeral home. And I looked at her and I started laughing. She said, no, Angela, I'm very serious. And I took all of the literature and I've been reading it over this morning. And yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, TV and film is what I want to do as well. I mean, I've done a lot of TV. I've done a lot of films. So yeah, yeah, it's just, it's just redressing the model. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that... it's just re redressing the model. And you are just living proof, too, that you can... 
you can always go after what you want and still do it. I mean, you would never know that you're, you know, if you if you want to share your age, which is still a young age. I'm 60. I'm 60. 60. Yeah. No, no stopping. No end in sight. Yeah. Mm-mm, no, Mm-mm. no. You know what makes me know that it's all wonderful? When I see people like Dion Warwick, who's like 77 years old and does 235 dates a year from Paris to Milan, to the, I was like, how do you do this? It's an energy. It's what you put yourself around. Mm-hmm. You put yourself around good energy. You can do. It's just like if you just be around some people that's just depressing, always complaining, never happy about nothing. But that's what you become. I alienate myself from those things that are negative, and I, I, I squeeze the juices from the from from things that are positive. I sprinkle it all over me and try it. And then people say, "Oh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah." I'm never. Gonna, I'm gonna stop when I want to stop. I just don't believe in anyone controlling my life. I control this life. This is this this is a life that was given to me to control. And I'm going to do it until I get tired of doing it. I ain't tired yet. Mr. Angelo Ellerby, <laughs> you have said so many inspiring things. Please let everyone know how they can get the sense of success, your candle line, and as well as Ask Angelo and Inside Look at the Entertainment Industry from a PR guru. And how can people well, keep uh, up with you? Sorry. Oh, please. Um, thank you so very much. One, the candle line is being sold through my website, which is uh, LBElegance.com. That's E L L E R B E E.com, Elegance.com. Um, my books are through the Amazon, Amazon. And then I'm on all of the social media platforms. It's either Angelo LRB, the handle, or Double Exposure. And look, and I, I can only say I'm open to come to schools and seminars and sororities and have a good time in lecturing and teaching. So reach out. As if you already cannot tell by listening how resonant Mr. Ellerby is. You, it's nothing like actually being there with him. And I'm so glad that you are going to be doing a college tour. I want to thank you so much for talking to So Booking Cool. It was terrific talking with you. Honestly, there's so much that could be discussed with you. No time is enough time. But yeah, you mentioned... You know, the candle line, both books, how to get it, that college tour. I mean, it, it's phenomenal. Any final words you'd like to say? I would want to say I would want you, Jules, to continue to be a catalyst to connect the community with social events and social messages of, con- of great content. Continue to do what you do in serving your communities as an outlet to educate, stimulate, and promote positive things for people to go go by and grow by. Oh, that's oh, thank you so much. Thank you. You're more, you're more than welcome. And thank you to all the listeners. And until next time, so booking cool.